In this video, I'm going to demonstrate Logic 2010 symbolization for predicate logic. Now, it's not really that much diff different than uh, just regular sentential logic, but I just will do a couple problems and show you how it works. So first, we're going to do this one, 3.034. Kettle bo kettles boil quickly if not watched. Now, you can always use direct to input your solution, but I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to demonstrate how to break it down uh, in the Logic 2010 way. Now, the trick to doing uh, Logic 2010 is that you have to recognize what the main connective is. Uh, but in predicate logic, it's no longer just the main connective. We can have a main operator. So in this case, if it says kettles boil quickly if not watched, the method that I'm going to employ is to think about the group and the property. So the group here is the sort of the subject matter, the thing I'm talking about. And if I look at the sentence, the group is really just kettles. I'm actually talking about kettles, and kettles have this property that says they boil quickly if not watched. So once I realize that, I just have to ask, am I talking about all kettles or some kettles? And it should be clear that I'm talking about all kettles. So I right click and then I go and say that this is a universal generalization because I'm talking about all kettles. So I still need to say uh, that I'm symbolizing kettles boil quickly if not watched. So the, you can just enter whatever text you want in here. It's just to help you sort of realize what you've done and break it down. I just copy pasted. So now that I've done the universal, I actually realize that immediately this must be a conditional. And the reason why is because that's the canonical form of a universal. So what goes in here is going to be kettles. And then here is their special property, which is that they boil if not watched. Now that I know this, it's pretty straightforward. For kettles, this is just an atomic because I can see it over here. So I right click, click atomic, and then now I just write in F. Now the trick here is I also need to write in X so that it pairs with the correct variable on my universal. So I get FX. Now how do I say boil quickly if not watched? What I have to realize here is this also has a main connective. There's a logical connective hidden in here, and that's the conditional. And so if I want to sort of do it the long way, I'll say the antecedent is not being watched, and then the actual consequent or the ultimate property is to say that they boil quickly. So not watched is uh, going to be a negation, clearly, and then in here is watched. So I'll just write in an atomic, and that's HX. And boil quickly, well, that's pretty easy as well. That's an atomic. Uh, that's GX. And I check, and it is correct. So this is a pretty nice way of breaking it down. Notice that I use groups and properties. There are other solutions to this that would be perfectly fine. For example, I don't need to have this conditional over here. I could replace it with a conjunction and then have this conditional be um, bracket it off uh, over for the GX only. Uh, and there's that's the exportation option. There's So don't worry if you have a variant on the solution. Uh, I'm just sort of demonstrating how we uh, solve a problem. OK, let's do another one real quick. Uh, so no, I won't bother saving. And then so let's look at this. Some soldiers love war, but not all who love war are soldiers. Now, what's noticeable about this is that here, the main connective is actually the comma, but. And so it's not always going to be the case in predicate logic that your main connective is an existential or universal. So here it's the comma, but, which means that it's still a conjunction. And so the f on the left conjunct, I just need to say, some soldiers love war. And over here, I need to say, not all who love war are soldiers. So once I realize this, I can just separate these and symbolize them entirely separately one at a time. So let's do some soldiers love war. Well, that's clearly an existential generalization because it says some, and then the group is soldiers and the property is love war. Immediately, I can just invoke that this is a conjunction because that's the canonical form of uh, an existential. And so over here, this is the group, that's soldiers, and over here, that's the property, love war. So I can just go atomic and soldiers is fx. Again, I need to match the variables. And over here, I will say this is an atomic and they love war. So this now says some soldiers love war. But, which is the and, not all soldiers who love war, sorry, not all who love war are soldiers. So here you actually have an option. You can read this as a negated universal, not all, or you can read this as an existential. And it doesn't really matter. You're going to solve it correctly either way. But I'll just read it as a negated existential. So once I realize that, I click negation. And now what am I negating? The statement, all who love war are soldiers. So what's the group? 
Those who love war, what's the property? Our soldiers, and we are doing a universal generalization, which means it must be a conditional. So again, the group is who love war, so that's atomic GX, and the property is they are soldiers, atomic FX. And we check and we're good. So again, like I said, you could redo this so that it actually says uh, there is something who is a soldier and doesn't love war, for example. Um, anyway, this is how you do symbolization in Logic 2010. Uh, just keep working at it and you can always sort of try variant solutions and directly input them if you don't like this breakdown. Good luck!